Asia's fresh produce markets are always a highlight, and Bangkok has lots of them. Now, Trevor tells me that the Pat Klong Talat market is an important experience that I shouldn't miss. So it's 7 a.m., and we've taken a tuk-tuk across the city to check out the exotic and fascinating produce of the region. The market is 250 years old, and when you get into the flower section, the perfume is intoxicating. Wow, look at this trip. This is beautiful. Look at these. You know, this market's actually famous for these flower garlands that are sold everywhere here. Marigolds, orchids, and these. These have got to be my favourite. Do you know what that? No, I don't. Have a smell. All right. Beautiful jasmine, and they are just wow. gorgeous. They put the ice in the middle because yep. it keeps the buds closed. But as soon as you take them off and out in this warm atmosphere, yep. the flowers open up and the fragrance is intoxicating. Really? It's brilliant for freshening up a room or something like that. Yeah. Busking smelly boys. Can I have one, please? Smelly boys? What do you, what do you mean, smelly boys, Jess? Yeah? What are you talking about, smelly boys? Look at the variety here. It is fantastic, isn't it? I love this fruit. <laughs> See you later. Now, speaking of exotic fruits, I tell you what, when I first came here 20 years ago, there were so many different and really unusual fruit. But today, well, they're so much more common. Mango trees are just about as common as lemon trees in the old Aussie backyard. But when's an orange not an orange? Well, you've probably noticed if you've been in the tropics, most of the oranges are green. It's because of the high temperatures all the time. They never get the blush through them. But don't be scared to buy them because these fruit, well, the skin's very thin, but the fruit inside is rich and plump and juicy and well worthwhile grabbing. I just have to get another one. It's a dragon fruit, and I guarantee you it is as deliciously tasty as it is strange looking. Isn't it odd? Can you cut that for me, please? The interesting thing is that that's actually a fruit from a cactus plant, and you see it quite commonly around here because the climate's just perfect for it. Thank you. The taste? It's a cross between a kiwi fruit and a watermelon, but it's so much more refreshing. Visiting markets in Thailand is great fun. There's so much life, everything is great value, and you get a chance to interact with the locals, some of the most beautiful people on the planet. It was time for us to leave bustling Bangkok to make the 400 kilometre drive east to Isan, where Nigel Ruck was waiting for us. We're driving through some of the most productive farming country in all of Thailand, but I had to stop the bus and show you these. Earlier on, Jess showed you the beautiful pink dragon fruit. Now, it is sensational. This is what it comes from, a great big cactus plant. Now, these plants grow right up like this, produce masses of flowers that open up at night. And the interesting thing is this male and female plant, so they have to be cross-pollinated by moths. But then they end up producing these beautiful, big, plump fruit that tastes something like a cross between a kiwi fruit and a watermelon, but so much more juicy. About 15 kilometres from the town of Karat is Dan Quiam. Well known for its pottery, a craft that has been practised here for centuries. The whole concept of pottery is nothing new. It's been around for ages, but it's still fascinating to think that this, the local clay, which by the way is very sought after, turns into this but it doesn't happen on its own. The clay is combined with sand at a ratio of two to one and hand mixed thoroughly. The next step involves a mangle-like press where the clay is subject to what they call in the business a proper squashing and then slowly squeezed out of the tube at the bottom like a big brown wet slippy sausage. Beautiful. This is then measured and sliced into exact portions which are rammed into shape, ready for the master craftsman at the helm of the operation to spin some magic. When you're in one of these pottery villages, if you want to, you can have a go yourself for a small fee. And I've just been itching to get behind the wheel. OK, hang on, let's get the brakes on. Here we go. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. Oh, yeah, get the gear on there. Yeah, we're... Oh, yeah. Once I'd familiarised myself with the technology, I was away at top speed, <laughs> feeling like an artisan as I pressed and caressed my lump of wet spinning clay. Everything seemed to be going beautifully at first, 
except perhaps the pottery, which wasn't really going anywhere, apart from the odd bit that flew off the wheel. I didn't want to show off, but it was obvious that I was beating the locals at their own game, coming up with a whole new style of pottery. Now that's what I call a perfect pot. Unlike my effort, but at least I got the colour right. Now if you want to have a go at pottery when you're over in Thailand next time, visit our website because all the information's there. Still going to put this in the kiln though. If you'd like to experience this for yourself, you'll find more information at thailand.net.au. Coming up after the break, we take you back a thousand years to a time that predates Buddhist history here in Thailand. Show you some amazing structures with incredible stories. Look, if you want to get around Thailand, there's only one way to do it. The folks at Imaginative Traveller are the Thailand travel experts and they've put together the 14-night fabulous Thailand package. This is a comprehensive tour through Bangkok, Kanchanaburi, Chiang Mai and the island of Koh Chang. Explore viewers who book and deposit by Friday the 27th of February will enjoy a 15% discount. So make sure you visit imaginative-traveller.com.au for more information. With a network of over 70 cities in five continents, the legendary service of Thai lifts you up and carries you to the whole world. Thai, smooth as silk. <laughs>